let's quickly talk about another different type of heart failure and this type of heart failure has to do with um, either if the output that's the cardiac output is high or the cardiac output is low okay so most people they kind of like um, misunderstand heart failure so when you talk about heart failure they feel like okay it's only when the functions of the heart are low no okay it could be that okay the functions of the heart are extremely high all right and you also have a heart failure towards that side okay so let's have it like this so for the high uh, output heart failure we said a high, uh, high output heart failure and low output heart failure are two different types of heart failure classified based on the cardiac outputs and the peripheral resistance okay so here we have the high cardiac we have the high output heart failure and here we have the low output heart failure okay so on the basis of that i'll be talking about these two conditions so when you marry the two knowledge you get to look at the similarities and you get to look at the differences between the two concepts so for the high output heart failure um the cardiac output is about what the cardiac output is more than eight liters per minute okay that's for the increased cardiac output okay that's uh, for high out um cardiac uh, high, high um output heart failure okay the cardiac output is more than eight liters per minute there's decreased peripheral resistance there's normal or near to normal systolic function okay now what could be the causes of a high output heart failure it could be that there's volume overload okay from different parts of the body right like valvular regurgitation and anemia okay it could be that the valves all right the valves regulating the flow of blood from the atrium into the aorta or atrium into the ventricles all right they are not competent so there's what regurgitation there could be high output states like okay some conditions where you find yourself and naturally um the output of the heart is kind of like exacerbated all right examples include what, hyperthyroidism and pregnancy okay so if you're having high output heart failure what will be the symptoms You'll be weak that's fatigue deep snare that's uh difficulty in sleeping then mm, deep snare difficulty in breathing okay i was just talking about paroxysm and nocturnal uh, deep snare that when you sleep they have difficulty in breathing then we have what palpitations then from palpitations we have what weight loss okay so this is it this is a high output heart failure okay to lead to what increased cardiac output okay i was talking about the possible causes here we're talking about the low output heart failure now we said that in this type of heart failure the cardiac output is decreased okay uh which is less than what four liters per minute so on the basis of this there's increased what peripheral resistance all right there's also what impaired high um sorry impaired systolic function all right so decreased cardiac output increased peripheral resistance impaired systolic function all right so what could be the causes of a low output heart failure it could be that there's a systolic dysfunction from disease conditions like what myocardial infarction and cardiomyopathy all right then uh but you might also want to check if there's what diastolic dysfunction like in a hypertensive heart disease okay <clears throat> systolic dysfunction means that okay the heart is not contracting for enough blood to pump into circulation or um diastolic dysfunction is more of like what the heart is not relaxing for enough blood to fill up the ventricles so that they can pump sufficient blood out okay so that's uh let's talk about the symptoms of this um 
low output heart failure now. Okay, you have fatigue, you have dyspnea, you have autopnea. Okay, you have what? Decreased exercise tolerance. Okay. Now, it is important to note that they are not mutually exclusive. Now, some patients may have both high and low heart output heart failure, okay, simultaneously. Now, accurate diagnosis and treatment depend on thorough understanding of the underlying pathophysiology of the disease condition, all right? So that's why we're actually introducing you guys. Maybe in um, lectures to come, we're doing single lectures on heart output failure, how to manage it, and all the stuff in much more in detail. All right, so that's basically the differences between what um, high output heart failure and low output heart failure. So see you guys pretty soon.